It's a familiar story. Travelling home one night, former policeman Paul Cox picked up a speeding ticket. Um, I was driving a car that had cruise control, which was set at just under 70 miles an hour. I passed a, a marked police car that was doing police checks at the time. I was then pulled over by this vehicle, uh, where I was uh, alleged to have been doing in excess of 90 miles an hour. Paul was convicted, but he appealed and won. The court found there were discrepancies in the speed gun evidence used against him. I was fortunate enough to have been an ex-police officer who was able to access information and use my knowledge to question um, that, the, that there had been a discrepancy at the time. So could the camera have lied? There are several types of government approved laser guns used in Britain, but they all work on the same principle. An operator will target the vehicle, press the fire button, and the machine then sends out infrared pulses, which take a quick series of distance readings. And from those readings, this can work out the speed at which the vehicle is traveling. It's crucial that in the fraction of a second it takes to get a reading, the gun is held still. This is so important, it's in the official training manual. So what happens if the operator moves the gun at the critical moment? The answer is that you can get some very strange readings indeed, as Dr. Clark showed me. If I point this laser uh, speed meter at the rear of the car and pan it along the vehicle, then I can get uh, a speed reading off a stationary vehicle. I will demonstrate that now. Six miles an hour. Six miles an hour. What Dr. Clark is demonstrating is known as slip effect or panning error. If at the moment it is fired, the laser beam is slipped sideways, for example, down the side of the vehicle, the gun is effectively tricked. It interprets that movement of the beam as a speed. So the machine is fooled into thinking that some kind of change in distance has happened. That's right. Because the laser beam itself has moved and moved closer to the machine. That's it, exactly. So in theory, if an operator slips the gun along the side of a moving car, this could add the length of the car to the distance actually travelled. And we calculated this could add up to 30 miles an hour to the speed recorded. The gun most commonly used in the UK is called the LTI 2020. The manufacturer says that while the gun might be tricked by a stationary target, it's impossible to get a false reading from a moving one. Any slip, they say, would produce an error message. And it's not just the manufacturer who believes the guns can never be wrong. Using the Freedom of Information Act, Inside Out discovered that, incredibly, the Home Office doesn't test speed guns for slip effect. So we did. To do this, we have a track and a truck. Inside the truck is fitted the latest satellite technology to give us an accurate speed reading. And inside the cab, someone to radio us that speed. Here we're operating two laser speed guns. Dr. Clark will be trying to get a correct reading, pointing straight at the truck, holding the gun steady. But the other operator will make a tiny sideways movement as he presses the trigger, sliding the beam along the side of the truck to see if the machine can be fooled. But first we check our equipment. 29 miles an hour, 29 miles an hour. What have you got in the van, Chris? 29 miles an hour. Hang on, thank you very much. So, now let's try the impossible, the slip effect on a moving vehicle. On the first 10 attempts, the gun displays an error message, just as tele-traffic and the Home Office predicted. But on the 11th attempt... 53 miles per hour, 35 miles an hour. Chris, what speed were you doing then? So Mike, what happened there? Well, this time we have one laser gun uh, registering a slip. Uh, it's a much higher speed. That's simply because it was panned slightly along the side of the vehicle. If someone was doing just below 70 on a motorway, that puts them up in 90 something. Uh, they're going to be done by the police for sure. We put the same situation in a 30 mile an hour limit. If the uh, driver is driving below 30 miles an hour, that puts him above 50 miles an hour. He could well lose his license for that. 
This red line shows the very slight movement our operator did to get a false result. From a further 11 attempts, we got a wrong reading six times. The police say their operators are trained to hold the gun steady. But the equipment's designed to be used without a tripod and at a range of up to a kilometre. How easy is it not to slip? We asked Professor of Engineering and author John Brignall. I think anybody who wants to find out how difficult it is to get a pair of powerful binoculars and try and focus on the uh, number of a moving car 500 metres away is quite difficult. Uh, in fact, just watching anything in a powerful set of binoculars is difficult just because of hand tremor. Professor Brignall says that if an operator on the side of the road is pointing at a car 500 metres away, the movement needed to slip, say, off the number plate and down the side of the car is minute. Very roughly, without doing the whole calculation, you're probably talking about the, the front part of the camera moving about the thickness of a human hair. The LTI 2020 is made in America, imported by Teletraffic and then approved for use here by the Home Office. The Home Office, Teletraffic and the police all declined to take part in this programme. So we were unable to get hold of a gun here. Instead, our tests were carried out using a gun from America. In a statement, the Association of Chief Police Officers said our experiment was misleading because the UK-approved device uses different error-tracking software to the American version. They also said the Home Office Scientific Development Branch is of the opinion that the UK version will perform within permitted tolerances if used in accordance with the current published ACPO enforcement guidelines and will not replicate the errors shown by the American device. But Dr. Clark believes the UK version is susceptible to error. We used a US device for our tests. I can see no reason why the UK device should not suffer the same problems. Both are based on the same technology and principles. There may be some minor variations, some changes, such as displaying range in meters rather than feet. But the basic operational principle is the same in all devices. Furthermore, Inside Out has found a recent expert report written by Frank Garrett, the UK manufacturer of the LTI 2020. In it, he says the gun used by UK police is identical to that used by NASA. And NASA told us their LTI 2020 is the US version, which would strongly suggest that the UK and US guns are identical. Kerry Dodd was a traffic policeman for nearly 30 years. Before he retired five years ago, he and his team regularly used laser speed guns. As far as I'm aware, the equipment is very reliable. However, on occasions, you would get a result that was not consistent with what you, your own eyes were telling you. Um, sometimes it would be a much lower reading than you ex expected. Sometimes it may be higher. What was the explanation? Well, sometimes there, wa the, the, there was no explanation. And Dr. Clark says the police should now openly test their equipment. I would welcome the opportunity to properly test a UK approved device. This would once and for all clear up any doubt as to the reliability that can be placed on speed measurements made by this device. We too have asked the authorities for a chance to test UK approved speed guns, but they have refused. So the jury is out on whether the Home Office or Dr. Clark is right. Now, if you're thinking of contesting a speeding allegation, there is something you should know. The police have told us that anyone who uses the evidence from our film to plead not guilty could, if they lose, face a much bigger penalty in court. Been warned. Thank <laughs> you.